Hello, Mount Calvary, and welcome to your daily devotional. We're continuing our walk through the book of Judges, and today we're looking at Judges chapter 15. And today is an action movie. They need to take this chapter of Samson, and, well, the whole story of Samson, but especially today, and make it a movie because there are some amazing things that are going to happen, um, so, some amazing action scenes. As we remember from yesterday, we left off where Samson got married to a Philistine woman he thought was beautiful. He gave her a, a, a riddle, or well, he gave the whole wedding party a riddle about the honey that he ate from the dead lion that he tore apart because the spirit came across, came upon him. And he told his wife, and his wife showed his allegi her allegiance was not to him, but to her own people. And so we left off with Samson killing 30 Amalekites to get 30 uh, pairs of clothes to give to the 30 uh, groomsmen, and then leaving. And we, we leave off with that last verse where uh, the, hus the, the father of his wife gave her away to the best man. So that's where we leave off, and we'll get into chapter 15 from there. Later during the wheat harvest, Samson went to visit his wife. He took a young goat along for her. He said, I'm going to sleep with my wife in her bedroom. But her father would not let him go in. Her father said, I thought you hated her, so I gave her to your best man. Isn't her younger sister better looking? Marry her instead. Samson said to him, This time I won't be guilty. When I get even with the Philistines, even though I'm going to do something terrible to them. So Samson caught 300 foxes. He tied them together in pairs by their tails. Then he fastened a torch between their tails. He set the torches on fire and released the foxes in the Philistines' grain fields. So he set fire to all their grain, whether it was stacked or in the fields. Their olive orchards also caught on fire. I'll stop there. So we have it in the summertime. It's time to harvest the wheat. It's an important time in the communities. It's an important time uh, at the for the people, because this is where they're going to get their bread. This is where they're getting a main source of food. And Samson goes to get his wife back, and he brings back the the, the gift of reconciliation, a young goat, because nothing says, I'm sorry, like a young goat. And her father says, nope, your wife is already married to someone else. Shows you what he, they thought of the marriage. But I have a younger daughter, marry her instead. And Samson kind of it's like, well, this time I'm going to get even, and I'm not even going to feel bad about it, because last time I had to kill 30 people, but this time I don't feel bad. So he gets 300 foxes and makes 150 pairs and sets a torches on fire and has them run through the grain. That would make an awesome movie scene. But by doing this, Samson destroys the entire town's economy, destroys the entire town's food source. So people are going to get mad. We'll continue in verse 6. Some Philistines asked who did this. They were told Samson. He's the son in law of the man at Timnah. Samson did because the man at Timnah took Samson's wife and gave her to his best friend, man. So the Philistines burned Samson's wife and her father to death. Samson said to them, If that's how you're going to act, I'll get even with you before I stop. So he attacked them violently and slaughtered them. And he went to live in a cave at the cliff of Edom. So now we have the Philistines say who does this, and they take their punishment out on Samson's wife and her father. And we still see Samson has an allegiance, he has a connection to the wife, because he says, well, I'm going to get even now. He was even when he destroyed the economy, but now he's going to get even for them for killing his wife. And here in verse 8, um, the, good, the God's word translation um, which is what I like for these videos. It says, so we attacked them violently and slaughtered them all. But if you go to the ESV, um, that is going to say something different. It's going to say something about hips and thighs. And he struck them hip and thigh with a great blow, and he went down and stayed in the cleft of the rock of Edom. And then the evangelical heritage uh, version, it's he ripped them to pieces in a devastating attack. This ideal of hip and thigh is he is not only killing them, but he's absolutely destroying them. Even at the most sensitive part, the hip and the thigh is where you grab uh, when you are making covenants uh, in this culture. It kind of makes you uncomfortable, but it's an important part. It's kind of um, where the value of humanity is, right? How do you create uh, uh, the next generation? It's between uh, that area, 
So it's a special part, and Samson absolutely destroys it. Um, so he doesn't just kill them, but he embarrassingly kills them. He slaughters them violently. Again, how great of a movie scene would that make? And this is part of the reason I as a, love the book of Judges and always have is because it has some of the best scenes in, in the whole Bible. But let's keep going. So the Philistines came, camped in Judah, and overran Lehi. The men of Judah asked, why did you come to fight us? The Philistines answered, we've come to tie up Samson and do to him what he did to us. So we're, so we're trying to get even. So 3,000 men from Judah went to the cave and the cliff at Elam. They said to Samson, don't you, don't you know that the Philistines rule us? Why have you done this to us? Samson replied, I did to them what they did to me. So the men from Judah told him, We've come to tie you up and hand you over to the Philistines. Samson said to them, Swear to me that you won't harm me yourselves. They told him, We promise, we'll only tie you up and hand you over to them. We certainly won't kill you. So they tied him up with two new ropes and brought him back from the cliff. When he came to Lehi, the Philistines met him with shouts of triumph, but the Lord's Spirit came over him. The ropes on his arms became like strings burned in fire, and those on his hands snapped. Samson found the jawbone from a donkey that, he, that had just died. He picked it up and killed a thousand men with it. Then Samson said, With a jawbone from a donkey, I've made two piles of them. With a jawbone from a donkey, I've killed a thousand men. When he finished saying this, he threw the jawbone away. He called that place Ramath Lehi, Jawbone Hill. Samson was very thirsty, so he called out to the Lord and said, You have given me this great victory, but now I'll die from thirst and fall into the power of godless men. So God split open the hollow place at Lehi, and water gushed out. Samson drank some water, then he was refreshed and revived. So he called the place En Hakor, spring of the one who calls out. It is still there at Lehi today. Samson judged Israel for twenty years during the time of the Philistines. Right, so we covered a lot there. So the Philistines want to go get revenge, and, and the Israelites, the uh, people of Judah, basically say, oh, okay, well, let's get him for you. And you see, the people of Judah are willing to do this because they don't see Samson as what he is. They don't see Samson as who God has ordained to begin to save them from the Philistines. They see Samson as a liability. Samson's only bringing more trouble to them. Samson's not an asset. He is a liability. So they're going to give him over so they can live better lives. But God has different plans. God sends the Holy Spirit and he breaks out of the ropes. And with the jawbone of a donkey, he kills a thousand men. It's pretty impressive. Again, what a great movie scene is. His own people come tie him up. And then the Holy Spirit comes upon him at that moment of conflict and he breaks free grabs a jawbone and gets to work and he called this place Ramath Lehi now this is kind of an interesting thing because Lehi itself means jawbone so it seems that this place is only important after this story it's not a place that was well known before this moment but after this moment Everyone knows that this is a special place. Everyone knows this is where something significant happened, where God intervened into human history and through Samson made his power known. And so here at Ramoth Le Le Lehi, or Lehi, Jawbone Hill, Samson is victorious. And after his victory, remember this is summer in the middle of Israel. It's a hot place. It's not very comfortable. He's exhausted and thirsty, and he's worried he's going, to, he's going to die of his exhaustion and fall into the power of godless men. The word there is uncircumcised men, the men who do not know Yahweh. And so God shows his power once again, opens up the hollow place, and water gushes out. Reminds us of Moses with the rock, where his staff hits it and water gushes out. And here we have the spring of the one who calls out. From that moment, Samson judged over Israel for 20 years. Today we have an action movie play out for us. But we see I, this interaction between the people of Judah and the one who God has called for him. Sometimes we do not see people as God sees them. Sometimes we don't see why God has placed certain people in our lives. But he has placed them there for a reason. 
Sometimes it's not so they can go be our hero, but sometimes it's there to teach us something. Sometimes it's there so we can serve them. So as you go out today, I would ask that you pray that God would open your mind so you can love and serve all those around you who he has placed in your life. And to love and serve them to the best of your ability and point them to the cross. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. We have one bonus episode this week so we can get through the story of Samson. And tomorrow, Samson and Delilah, um, we're going to see our hero fall. But it's an important part of the story and it reminds us of, of, of our humanity and how God has sent a Savior for us who will not fall, but instead lives a perfect life for us. Have a great day, Mount Calvary.